All right, guys, I'm very excited to bring you this very special episode of my friend Jeff Sorensen's, not only his fruit tree farm out in Kona, Hawaii on Big Island that has over 200 different varieties of fruit, over 300 different fruit trees, but he also has a, a tree house that has become this the most wish-listed Airbnb in all of Hawaii that he built on his property. So he's talking about that journey. He's talking about another um, property that he uh, helped get started. It's like this mansion retreat center thing. And he talks about his entrepreneurial journey of just creating all of this stuff. And I love his no-nonsense, hard work, logical mindset around it. He's just like, well, instead of just saying I can't, I just figured some things out and just made it happen. <laughs> and it was really, truly made an impact on me, inspired me. And I thought it would be so fun for you guys to be able to see all of these incredible different types of fruits. Um, oh, he found a lava, lava, lava tube. Yes, lava tube cave under his property on accident one time. So we go in there. I mean, it's just like, it's just this magical journey of him like pushing into creating this life and how he did it. And he's just being very, very real. Um, he takes us through these, uh, this coffee farm. He's so a part of this endeavor that I don't want to spoil because it's like really cool how it all happened. But um, he was able to get five acres of land that has co has coffee plants on it. And he's like really working hard to, you know, get that all ready to go too. So he's taking you through. But I just found I just find Jeff's story really inspiring in terms of creating the life that you want. Um, it's it's so cool. And as a health nut, I mean, we were doing things like uh, juicing sugar cane. It's delicious, by the way, and actually very nutritious. <laughs> sugar cane by itself has has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. So good. I'm um, just trying all these different fruits and then, you know, the e eggs from his fresh chickens. And it's just, it's a really, really awesome place. And I just wanted to show it to you guys. So um, I know you will enjoy watching it, learning, um, and also hearing his journey of business and entrepreneurship was really inspiring as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. have trees that are flowering and never giving you but they're both delicious so basically built this deck way out here because i noticed that whenever people would come this is the first good one i've ever had come up the street And we have two types of avocados. This is a kahalu, and this is a this is a linda. And all the avocado trees on every island, everywhere in Hawaii, all have this lace wing bug. That's why they all look really crappy. It just came like last year, and there's currently no no cure or anything yet. Hmm. Okay. Wait. So. What are the difference on these avocados? Um, the Linda is like really huge and it's kind of like not that oily and not that great. It would be better for like making like a chocolate mousse out of. Yeah, I think I had one of those in Kauai. It's like thick, very thick. No. Almost kind of dry. No. No, that's these ones? That's like, that's, that's like this one. This one's okay. a kahalu. This one's like really thick, like nutty, like oily. Mm. Like you'd want to eat it on like a turkey sandwich. Yeah. This one is like big and kind of like watery and oh, not that, God. not that like nutty type taste. The Linda one? The Linda. And these are, but what are these? This one is a Kahalu. Okay. This one's my favorite one. Is this native to Hawaii? I think so. Okay. It sounds you like want it. one of these? Oh. <laughs> this, what? this is a dragon fruit. Really? That's yeah. how they grow? They grow on a cactus. No way. I did not know that. Yes. And I have like five varieties. This one, you're in luck because this is the sweetest of them all. So I'm going to give it to you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Wait, so what is this one? This one is called Megalanthus something. Mm. Not sure, but. Do you remember the name of all your fruits? Oh yeah. <sighs> I can tell you every tree. You got like 200 different name. varieties. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, but I really, it's like the same way when like, Someone has like 10 kids and they're like, how do you remember them all? And people are like, well. <laughs> they matter to me. Oh my gosh. Check this out. Let me just toss that thing. It's not even that right. 
so bad, Mara gave it to me. It's okay. <laughs> so, look at this. Try that. Oh my god. What made you think? That it should be unreal. It should be pretty delicious. Unreal. Unreal, bruh. Mmm. Mm. That's so juicy. I'm gonna get another one. I had no idea they grew on cacti. I know, it's crazy. And they climb. They all do? All do? Oh, yeah. No way. Yeah. And so you have to. Um, <clears throat> now there's a difference because there's pataya, which is like basically a cactus fruit that grows on like a saguaro, saguaro looking yeah. type cactus. And these are not pataya. And then there's dragon fruit. And dragon fruit is all, they're all like a climbing. Uh, like a climbing cactus like this. Wow. I'm going to go give this one to, to Justin. Yes. Um, let us continue on and go on our tour. So you were saying when you got here, there was one lemon tree? One tree. <laughs> Babe, I left you a dragon fruit on the table. <laughs> one lemon tree. And one tangerine tree. And now... Now there's 300. <laughs> um, so what happened was I wasn't always like obsessed with fruit. You know, I basically was like a normal person once. <laughs> and I had this, <laughs> I bought the property and I was like, oh, I want a mango tree. Yeah. So I course. went and got a mango tree and I was like, okay, cool. I like planted it and I felt all good. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I guess I have space. I have more room. Yeah. You got so three like, here. Then it was an avocado tree and then it was a, uh, guava and then it kind of just i basically kind of kept having i kept coming back to the same notion of well i still have more room what were you looking for here this is one of my top fruits on the whole farm if i have one in here that's ripe it's called uh it's called uh um what's it called Ah, uh, you are in luck. Oh, yay. It's called an achacha, also known wow. as a Bolivian mangosteen. These are actually the small, runty ones at the end. But it's related to purple mangosteen. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think I've seen this. So there's a seed in the middle, so just take that and bite it and pull okay. it out with your teeth. Just pull this out? Oh, take this whole thing and bite yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? And you can work mm. around the seed. Oh my goodness. It's like, mm. I don't even quite how know how to describe, describe the flavor, but. Sorry guys, it's torture. It's like, it's kind of tart, a little bit sweet and sour. And like. To me, it tastes like kind of like delicious shampoo. <laughs> mm -hmm. It almost has like a. It definitely has like a. Florally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Love it. They get better than that too. Amazing. So we're on what fruit number like six already that you've had? Yeah. This yeah. Is another one. Gave me. Oh, I see the treehouse, guys. We'll get there in a minute. It's so cool to see the treehouse. I know, right? <laughs> Hi, friend. When I first met you, you had a platform. Oh, I know. <laughs> I built more. And I thought you were building like a fort. I was like, cool, Jeff, that's great. <laughs> yes, it's come a little ways. Yeah. You ready for this? So this oh, is big? called a tamarillo. Oh, so okay, if you yeah. squeeze it, just squeeze you it squeeze real it hard out. and squeeze it in your mouth and just. Mm. Mm. It's, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an okay fruit. It's like sweet and almost savory a little bit. It's, 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 they also call it a tree tomato. So it's mm -hmm, kind of like mm -hmm. distantly related to a tomato. This that. is a fig tree. And I just took a bunch of figs off of it. But there are no more right now. Um, here was the only tree on the property when I got here. <laughs> was this the tangerine? Yeah, tangerine. This is the tangerine tree. And it actually makes really good tangerines. Um, There's a really ripe one on the ground. You can check it. I don't know how long ago it fell. I don't know if it's trustworthy or not. So sometimes, that is a good looking one. Mm 
Let's see if it's acceptable. And then I just planted a bunch of citruses in here, a few different kinds of lemons and limes. That's a, that's a soursop tree. Some people have had those. Soursop? It's like a crazy, almost all the fruits I have here are crazy names and crazy fruits. Okay, yeah. It's like. Why not? Well, when you have 200 different kinds, that's probably yeah. gonna happen. I can no go? <laughs> Let's see about this one. Puppies are ready. Hey guys, I just love how cute and loyal and follow you around they are. Oh. Hi, Hunter. Is this Hunter? Yeah. Hey, well, <laughs> it's okay. It's a little tart. You know, what do you do? A little early. Delicious. Okay. These ones are so good. I wish one of these was right. Oh man. This is called a Rolinia deliciosa. I had one of these you did. on Kauai. It was, I was like, the whole time stopped. The world stopped. They were like white and black almost, right? Yes. Is that correct? Check out these guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, yay. These are a variety called Malama. Malama avocados. And what are they like? They're pretty good. They're like... They're a little thicker. Okay. A little more oily. So not as watery. Super high quality. How amazing is it that you get to just walk around your yard? Oh my gosh. There's just food pretty everywhere. Much, pretty like much the best thing. Delicacy food. There's literally just food everywhere. <laughs> I just And then didn't... you like you like hunt boar. Like you sometimes have boar come across your property. I used right. to have some, then I put up all the rock walls. Uh, okay. So I don't anymore. You've probably heard of this. Oh. This is Australian finger lime. No, I've never heard of that. You have it? Uh-uh. It's like caviar. Oh wow. Lime. Here, let me see that. Oh, that's crazy. Do you want to try? So you just like squeeze it out of there? Yeah, oh. try it. Ooh. It's like a little poppy. Yeah, it is. This one doesn't have much flavor. I don't think it like developed right. Mm. Crazy. You it want more dragon? Lime inside. We probably need it. Oh, look at this freaking big one. Oh boy. This is a juicy one. <laughs> yeah, so I built these stands so that so that when the dragon fruit grows up, it has something to trellis onto. Otherwise, otherwise it um it would just like spread on the ground and then you'd never get any fruit. Dude. Right, okay. Look at this beast. Look at this beast of one. So awesome. How long does it take these to grow? Like when like when I put like little starts in the ground, it would take like two years. Okay, watch this. Oh wow. Wow, that is a big one. That looks so good. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Do you find it funny when people cut all their fruit up? Because yeah. you eat it like this all the time. <laughs> or when they cut it wrong. <laughs> okay. Just bite into that. All right. Should I film you biting into yeah. it? Yeah. Uh-oh, it doesn't know how to go to... <laughs> Wait. Okay, let's How see. do I tell it to find you? Oh, uh, yeah, you can just move Okay. Yeah. Mm. Let me get you in the sun. No. Here we go. This is better. Wow. Show the folks. It's like... Mm. Kind of like what kiwi wishes it was. It's so good. Mm. You know what it tastes like to me? Mm. Those like frozen so lemonade good. things you'd get at like a baseball game. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You've been like really perfecting this. <laughs> I know. All right, I'll take over. You can have the rest of that. Let me see if it still tastes like that. It does. Mm. <laughs> the icy cups. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I mm. bet if it was cold, it would be like spot on. Mm. Oh, man, that is good. It does kind of taste like lemonade. Now you said that. Mm -hmm. Our suggestion. <laughs> and then, oh, no way. It's your lucky day. Oh, yay. I got one. One of these is ripe. Just for you. What's, what is this one? 
different variety of dragon fruit. No thorns. Look at this color. Wow. Look at that. Wow, that is unreal. It is like fuchsia. It is. Like brighter. Okay, let's see how you switch. I'll film you. Okay, wow. It's like eating like... Let's see it looks like how, a... you, how this compares to okay. the other one. Totally different taste. Wow. Different texture too. The other one's more like watery. Mm -hmm. This one's like thicker. And the taste, oh my God, it's so good. This one also, I think, has like a floral. Yeah. Do you love it? Um, it's so good. It's so sweet. It is absolutely insane. Here, Should I eat some. it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Guys, we're going with the pro video skills, so. Mm. <laughs> we got some cherimoya and atomoya. Yeah, These so are two of my favorite, favorite fruits. The lady I got the Royena from was saying that's kind of like cherimoya. Do you yep, think? they're all in the same family. The funny thing is cherimoya and atomoya are actually better than Rolinia. Really? This is another Rolinia tree. I was hoping there might be a ripe one on it, but nope. No ripe ones. Just yeah, when they're ripe, they're like white, right? They're like yellow and then okay. white on the inside. I was yeah. just doing a quick check, seeing if any other ones snuck by us. But I have all these terraces, and these terraces have different fruit trees on them. Oh, wow. And then I'm just checking to see if this had any fruit. This is a really good tree, too. All right. Okay, we're gonna have to go see the treehouse. We have no choice. All right. Treehouse it up. Okay, tell us, tell us about the treehouse. Okay. How did this start? So. And where did it go? Okay. <laughs> so here's how it started. Like five or six years ago. Actually, it was like seven years ago. My brother-in-law and I, we built a little kid treehouse, just like okay. the one you would see yeah. anywhere. A couple boards nailed. You know, screwed to a tree trunk. Right. Little platform. Oh, these cute little new leaves. This is actually a nut tree. It's so pretty. Oh, really? Yeah. These three are, they put a big cluster of nuts out with these amazing flowers. Oh, wow. Really cool. Anywho. Um, and so we built this tree fort, little one. And hey, guys. Okay, okay. You scampering along. So we built this tree fort, and I actually left the rungs of the tree fort. <laughs> That's awesome. So this was this used to go up to the tree. And then what happened was I had this I had this day. Well I wanted to always sleep in the tree, but there was no roof and there was like, you know, mosquitoes and stuff. And so yeah. it was like it wasn't really like practical yeah. to sleep um wasn't really practical <laughs> with my emotional support he's increasing it was, you worship it wasn't Logan. really practical to do it and so i kind of wanted to build a roof and i wanted to build like walls and a roof yeah and then as i started thinking about it, i'm like well there's really no way to do it. It's not strong enough, yada, yada, yada. And so I mm. kind of, I started watching Treehouse Masters because mm. I was like, maybe these, these guys built like amazing mm. stuff. Yeah. And so I started watching that. And then, and then um, after watching Treehouse Masters, I went and I saw this one that they built and they said something about like renting it. And I was like, hmm. And I had one <laughs> Airbnb at the time, mm -hmm. this little one. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I said, I wonder if anyone in Hawaii has like a tree house that they rent. So I went on Airbnb and I looked and there was basically one, but it was in Volcano. Mm. So very, very like far away. Two hours away from here. Yeah. yeah. And like no beach, kind of cold, kind of right. rainy, kind of right. miserable, no ocean views, like no airport, like right. very way in the middle of nowhere. So you were like, ding. And I was like, <laughs> hmm, yes. I was like, so if I could build a tree house... It was, you know, 10 minutes from the airport and had a view and the beach and all these things. I'm like, it would kind of crush it. That was yeah. my thought. Right. And so then I started thinking, okay, well, this tree, so this is a, this is called a kukui nut tree. It's oh. actually 
Hawaii state tree. Yeah. It makes all these nuts um, that they actually call candle nuts. They have a lot of oil in them. And apparently Hawaiians used to like burn them. As so that's candles. how they look because everybody sees the kukui nut lays, but those have been all oiled up and stuff. So they fall off the tree okay. in a shell like this. Okay. Oh, okay. And then there's the nut inside of there. Then there's a secondary casing around that. And then there's actually even like. Wow, they're very hard. Holy shit, that's hard. <laughs> um. It's kind of the same as like a macadamia nut. Well, obviously I've crushed it all to hell now. <laughs> you can't eat that raw. I don't even think anyone even eats it cooked. But anyways, okay. that's a kukui nut. Yeah. So I knew that it wasn't gonna work to try to like build a platform off the tree. And so I kind of went around and I was like, well, I'm gonna have to build like post and pier, which is what they call this. So you have your supports, then you have your main um, these are called glue lamps, glue laminated beams. And then you have the floor that's resting on the glue laminated beams with a, with a little cantilever off of each side. And then once you have a floor um, and you have some shear walls and you've braced everything and it's supportive, then you can like build up from there. So that's when I met you. I yeah. just built the floor. And here's hot tub just to give you an idea of how much this has evolved and real quick can well i guess at the, the end we'll show the whole and, thing oh and a sauna right and there. the infrared sauna <laughs> this is a whole spa area that we built back here so i came back in here look at this came back in here hi morgan hello do you smell any good smells like back here oh my gosh cedar. yeah it's like cedar is that cedar yeah. Yeah, it smells so good. Yeah. And then I put a cold plunge in right here. Oh, really? Look, which oh. is a cold plunge shower. Oh. So when you step Coming out. Coming the tree. Yeah. Oh, just right here. Awesome, yeah. So when you step out of the sauna and you're a million degrees. Yeah. You can cold plunge shower. Nice. Maybe I'll put a cold plunge tub one day. Oh. Uh, and then, of course, there's the hot tub. And then this is like, you know, semi-private. The house is over there, but it's like, you know, yeah. mostly blocked. So people, you know. And if they're real, real nice, maybe they'll get some fruit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am? I'm going to clean that hot tub after these guests check out. Oh, is it I, bad? It's not bad, but it, it's looking like it's due. Yeah. Also, the bed's not made up there. So That's okay. Okay. That's okay. We just okay. Had some guest check out, so we're just... We're, we're in between. It's high demand, correct? High we demand. Well, we won't spoil earlier. We'll, we'll let you evolve the story. Wow. All right, let me try to get this, guys. Like, show me to show you from the front. Cool. Look, here, I'll show you the view that guests see when they come in. <laughs> it's funny, you've probably seen this a million times on pictures. Yeah, I watched this whole thing get built. It was like the best show ever. I was like, wait, what? There's a walkway now? <laughs> yeah. So this is where the guests come in. Yeah, so if you were a guest, you would check in. Yeah. And you would you would park up here for a second. First of all, this weed is not allowed. Or this. It's like this little tucked away. It's you so secret. You can't it's there. You yeah. can't. Like, if you're in the street, you, yeah. cannot, you cannot even see that this whole thing's here. So cool. So then you come in. It's like mega inner child wonderland. I built this little Japanese-esque, yeah. I don't know what this would be called, little pergola top thing. And then you have this little open walkway. And you get to see all the Monstera Deliciosa. Yeah, it's so perfect. Which I think this is on like everyone's pillows in the mainland. This yes. It's like the design that's on everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like the official It's like the official Hawaiian design. Pattern. And so then you come in and you have the kitchen on your left with all of the kitchen -y things. <laughs> a little more than a platform now. Yeah. We have a full scale kitchen, fridge, cooktop, microwave, water filter. Nice. Very, very humble table for two people because 
you know. But beautiful quality. We're in, we're in a tree house. Yes. And then we have, look at this, we have a full, wow. real bathroom. <laughs> so awesome. Here, go in and I'll show you. We can look at that. Wow. And show them the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty breezy in a tree house, Jeff. It is. That's a flushing <laughs> toilet. Yeah, wow. That's not like a composting <laughs> toilet. This <laughs> right. is like running water. That's insane. This is like spare no expense. Yes. I feel like I'm on Jurassic I remember Park. I was like hounding you when you were sh like putting these in your story. I'm like, save these. This is like the best show I've ever watched. Oh, I should. <laughs> I can go back. And then here. Da -da -da -da. I mean, wow. the bed's not made, so it's not as exciting. But no, it's exciting. <laughs> Look at this view. So here's the best thing. That's like a big screen. Yeah, I'm going to open it up and show you. So my favorite thing, as long as I can find the remote, I feel like guests hide the remote sometimes. The best thing, if it's just in here. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Mm, this is the best. So yeah, you can basically do your thing, that but you can is... you can close it when you're. Yeah, so bugs are coming in. Yeah. This is crazy. And then if you really want to shut up, shut you know shut everything. Yeah. We have pocket doors. Nice. So this is a this is a ten foot. This is a 10 foot opening. Awesome. I almost put a sliding vinyl glass door in here. Can you imagine? Like a white vinyl door. No. <laughs> no. Wow. And then I was like, you know, all these things. Yeah, it was worth it. Need to open all the way yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, wow. We in that tree coming out right there is so awesome. And then this is the jacaranda tree. Yes, that is the ocean. In case it turns purple. Which one does? <laughs> this has flowers on it that turn purple. The oh, whole tree wow. turns purple. It's really crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. The view is pretty killer. Yep. So there's the airport over there. There's wow. Costco. Yeah, it's like 20 minutes from the here. airport. It's so yeah. perfect. And then, yeah, it's like everything is close by, too. It's awesome. And everybody just, like, chills out here. They just, like, sit here. It's actually yeah. really... It's funny to me because people will rent this, and they will sometimes just stay here all day. Like, yeah. I'm like, I like laugh. I'm like, you guys uh, doing any like excursions? We're like, nah, we just sit here and they're, just sit. They're like, we're here for this. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice because this tree and this tree block all the like heat. So it never gets like uncomfortable up here. Even on a sunny day, this is wow. always like in yeah, the shade. Yeah, it's so nice here right now. Uh, and then tell them what happened with like, what was that magazine or something? Oh, website? geez. What, yeah, so yeah. it was. So Airbnb uh, voted this. Well, it, actually, they didn't even vote. It was just the people. It was the most, like, clicked, wish-listed Airbnb in the whole state of Hawaii. That is quite the yeah. claim to fame. I mean, it's probably not the most, like, successful. I mean, there's other Airbnbs that right. are, like, $5,000 a night or something right, crazy. Right. But it was, like, I guess the most, most amount of people yeah. want to come here. Like, wowie wow. Wowie. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? So they listed that. They they did an article for the top fifty most wish listed Airbnbs in every state. Mm -hmm. And then after that, like Men's Journal, New York Times, New York Post, Travel and Leisure, uh, like t like ten to fifteen different magazines did articles on it. Wow. And so then it got even more. And it wasn't like it wasn't popular before. It was like doing great. But yeah. then it did really really great. And I then I. Go ahead. Built the sauna and the yeah. and I kind of like just kept adding to it. Kept adding to it. I did the whole driveway, like basically tried. I'm I'm gonna try and make like a really nice like parking situation. I built the ramps and the paths and the stairs, and I'm trying to like improve it. Yeah, all the time. yeah. You're always doing that, you know. And it's like it's like a great business lesson because you know how they always say everybody's got ideas. Yeah. Right. Like you could have been like, wow, I could really make a great tree house and I've got a good location for it and then just not do it. Like, yep. what do you think the difference is in your mentality? Well, so most people are just so risk averse. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. What if it doesn't work out? Nobody is willing to take risks. And, and it's so funny because everybody knows the phrase like no risk, no reward. But like very few people are really willing to like, yeah. like put their neck on the line. Like, I think I've told you this when I built this, um, 
I actually had the idea to build it and I didn't have any money. Like, it wasn't like I was like, I got an extra 200 grand. Maybe I'll just like build this. I basically was like, solar was really bad. I was making almost no money from solar. And I had like maybe $30,000 of my own. Like, Mm -hmm. and then I got this idea to build it and I knew it was going to cost some money. I had no idea how much it was actually going to cost. Um, but I started building it and then I had to, at one point I had my two different credit cards, both maxed out, both $35,000 limits. So I had 70,000 in credit card. And then I had, I, I liquidated my Roth IRA, which had like $60,000 in it to build more. Then I took out three different hard money loans from friends because banks wouldn't give me any loans. Banks are so retarded. I was like, this is stupid. So I couldn't. So I basically was like, I was so leveraged. I had like, I had like $140,000 in debt into this. And it was crazy. So there was like, there was like a six month period after I finished building it that I was like, I was paying like a thousand dollars a month in just interest, like credit card interest, hard money loan interest. Right. And I was like, and I had so many people that thought I was like nuts. They're like, dude, you're crazy. How come you're spending so much money on this? Like, and then it's so funny because all the same people a year later, that was the best idea ever. That's such a good idea. You're such a visionary. Good job. Great job. You built the best tree house. And I was like, yeah. What was it like when you were leveraging yourself like that? You know what I mean? Like, what was the, it was, was it just like a, I freaking know. I was like, I was just like, if I build it, it will come. (laughs) So my, my whole thought process was this lady in Volcano was charging $350 a night for her treehouse. And I was like, okay, I know mine is going to be bigger better, more beautiful, better view, better location, better everything. Right. So I was like, so you had some, something so, to work so on. I was of. like, even if I only charge two fifty a night, I was like, that's still. And even if I only rent 20 nights a month, I went all the bare yeah. minimums. Right. I was like, I know that it'll sense. be successful. Yeah. And then, um, and there was a point like halfway through when I was like out of money and I was like, okay, should I finish it like cheap? Right. Should I do the like, glamping kind of like mosquito net like right you know kind of cheap big island type thing or should i like go like ultra luxury like real walls real ceilings like sheetrock tile you know like enclosed like super legit yeah. like high-end finishes i mean everything's copper everything's like right backlit everything's mango trimmed it's like right. you know i like you know really went for it and I just crossed that point and was like, I should just like go for it because this is going to be a luxury treehouse. And I'm like, who has that? No one has that. And so I was like, it's right. just, it can't not win. Right. And that was my mentality. It's awesome. And so, and so then I, you know, I listed it and then it went up and went in and it was just like, it, it was like every six months I was just raising the price because it was just more and more successful and, you know. I still feel like I could even continue to raise the price, but I like, at some point I feel bad. I like have to stop (laughs) the people. Yeah. But I mean, when you're getting people coming just to be in here, just to be in here, feel good. Yeah. It's like, I'm now competing with like people that were like, well, we were going to get like the honeymoon suite at the four seasons or we were going to stay here. Wow. And so we decided to stay here. And yeah, I'm like, cause it's meaningful and unique yeah. and personal and you built it yourself and it's on a fruit farm and the views. It's cool. and yeah. It's cool. I like it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to build another one. Are you? I can show you the location. Let's see it. Okay. <laughs> and speaking of that on the, if you build it, they will come, um, transition over. Can you talk a little bit about where, you know, where I'm staying? What's oh yeah. The mansion. Yes. So, I mean, that's another, that's another one. It's just like, it's just like, you know, everyone wants to like have something that's like move in ready or easy or minimal effort. And it's just like, if you're not willing to be the value add in the process. Mm -hmm. So basically it's like this, here's how it works in business. You either are the person that has the money and you can lend and make money and be successful. If you're not the person that has the money, you need to be the person that has the grit. And the work ethic and the go, 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 go. And like try and work and sweat equity, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like oversimplified, but... Pretty much. You, th- you have to bring value. You have to bring value. 
Right. Yeah. So if you're the money guy, you're like, cool, here, I'll loan you the I'm money for the project right. and I get 50% and I just sit there. And then you're the guy without the money, me. And so you're like, okay, I'll go to work and like bust my ass every day and I'll, pr- and I'll provide value. Right. So, you know, the problem is nowadays there's too many people that are like entitled and they want to be like the person without the money that thinks they're very valuable. Right. Without like putting in the work. 100%. And then that's the, you know. Then like, they just, my life shouldn't be this hard. And they're just waiting around for their, like, golden opportunity. Yep. You, just, you have to make it. So what happened with the mansion was I had a friend who's a realtor, and I was just like, hey, if you see any cool opportunities, let me know. Which is funny because I literally didn't have any money. Like, none. Like, I had, like, $5,000. <laughs> but I was like, if you see any cool flips or any cool, like, you know, real estate opportunities, let me know. And so... She called me one day and she's like, well, this house just got listed. It's not a flip. Well, it is a flip, but she's like, it's, you know, not something that you were looking for. And she's like, it's $5 million. And I was like, okay, like, why are you telling me this is crazy? It's like a lot of money. I don't got this. Right. And she's like, but it's, it's such a good thing. It's this mansion and it, and it comes with 26 acres of land. And I was like, okay. Sounds it's very, nice. It's very interesting. <laughs> and so, you know, I had to do a mind shift set Mm. because, you know, imagine if a realtor came to you and is like, I have this opportunity. It's a $5 million house. You know, your first thing is you're going to be like, I don't have $5 million. So instantly you're like, okay, pass. Mm -hmm. But then you have to stop and be like, wait a second. What am I good at? And I was like, I'm good at building. I'm good at creating things. I'm good at like, you know, design. I'm good at like flipping. I'm good at like you know, Mm -hmm. landscaping, I have all these, you know, Mm -hmm. these, these skills. And if you've like built skills in your life, and people recognize those skills, and you have a value that you can like, offer. Mm -hmm. So what happened to me is instead of passing on the opportunity, I was like, okay, I don't have $5 million, but I know people that do. Mm -hmm. And you know, and so I started reaching out to guys I knew in Utah, primarily. And I was like, hey, are you guys interested in this real estate opportunity in Hawaii? You know, my pitch to them was I need the the funds to acquire the property. But once it's there, I will go in and I will do the development work. I'll do the, I'll be the general contractor basically. And I'll like do the remodel. I'll like do all the legwork. So you don't have to do anything and I'll provide all this value and you can give me, you know, 10% or whatever percent you want to negotiate. Mine was like 10%. And so I said, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I will do. I think that I can. And, you know, this is where it's like good to have a little bit of a resume and have worked hard in your life. Because I was like, I have the top Airbnb in the state. Yeah. So I'm like, I know a little bit about Airbnb. Yeah. And so I said, I think I can take this mansion and really turn it around and make it really beautiful because it was ugly before it was so ugly it was i literally died it is another level it is so beautiful it is (laughs) unbelievably nice like uh, everything is like top of the line everything there's not like i was like what i was losing my mind last night it is you did you killed it i can't wait to show them who would have thought this hillbilly from utah Do these things. It, it, it is another level. Yeah. So, so basically, the story, the, the 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 I guess the moral of that story is, I sold myself to my skill set, um, to these to, to 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 someone to invest into the deal, let me come into the deal, you know, and and it was a huge lesson to me because I was like, wow, this is crazy. You can actually create ownership and you can create value. Without having, without having to be the person with the money. Because so we always just shut down and we're like, right. I don't have the money. I can't so, do that. right. But you think about how many guys do have money and they don't have the time or the connections or right. the know how. Right. You know, so if you're a guy in Utah and someone is like, hey, I found this really great property and I know you don't want to come out here and live and do all this work and you're not going to be swinging a hammer, but I can do all of it and we can have like some kind of a, you know, partnership. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that would be like the lesson that I would take from that. And that could be the same for, you know, doesn't have to be real estate. I guess you could apply that in several different areas of life, but that would be 
like the takeaway. And then, you know, I kind of negotiated some stuff with like some land in the beginning. And then there was a, there was a lot of stuff that happened. We were going to do a development. The development didn't work out. Uh, I still was able to negotiate some land. And so like, that's where, how I ended up with that five acres, that coffee orchard in there, which mm. is like beautiful. I'll show it to you mm. later. And so it was just crazy to like, look back and to be like, if a year and a half ago, I would have said, Oh, 5 million. That's like way out of my price range. Yeah. I can't do it. And walked away. Right. Then I wouldn't have all this experience. I wouldn't have this land. I wouldn't have anything. I'd just be, keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But it took like a ton of time and work and I didn't make any money in the last year. I was out there remodeling every day, sweating, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's just, and so it would be kind of like develop a skill set and be valuable and, and see how you can like insert yourself into situations and sell your value so that you can do something great, you know? Yeah. So good. Such a good lesson. You're right. So many of us. I'm definitely guilty of that. It will just be like, ah, oh, I mean, maybe someday. <laughs> maybe someday. Because here's like it's what's so worst. funny is for me, I always said, I've been saying for like 10 years, I'm like, I would love to like flip houses. That sounds really cool to me. And I'm like, one day when I have like a bank account with like mm -hmm. $500,000 liquid mm -hmm. and I can just go buy the dilapidated house and I can come in and do the flip and I can, you know, don't have to do loans and deal with the banks and I could make a lot of money flipping houses and it'd be fun. But then I'm like, ah, but I need to have all that working capital in order to do it. And so it's like, you just put it off and off and yeah. off until you just basically never do it. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, you kind of have to suck it up and be like, okay, I'm willing to partner with somebody else and share in the profits and share in everything else because I'm not currently mm -hmm. financially able to do this. So it's like as much as I would love to just go be like, oh, here's a foreclosed house for three hundred thousand dollars. Here's a cash offer. Buy it. And then I just go to work and flip it. And in six months, I sell it for six hundred thousand dollars. That would be cool. But I like I don't have that liquidity. You know, some people do. But like but, you know, what I could do is see that three hundred thousand dollar house and go to somebody who I know that has money and is busy and say, hey, this is a great opportunity. I'll do everything for it. Let's go in on it together and I'll share the profits with you 50, 50. Yeah. And then you've, now you've created a solution yeah. that allows you to go achieve this dream that you would have otherwise just had to pass on, yeah. you know? So it's like, yeah. get creative and don't be greedy. And then you can kind of like make stuff happen. Love it. Such a good lesson. Dang. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to be right. teaching some coaching lessons later. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Let's go see um, where you're going to build your other one. Yeah, then I'll show you the lava tube cave. Oh, right, Morgan? Yes. It is a tube cave. I, how could I forget the lava tube cave? It's pretty cool. This is another one of your Instagram story highlights that I highly recommend any human being with half a soul watch because it is so fun to watch you discover this thing <laughs> on your property. <laughs> like, I think you were the one that were like, you have to make this a highlight. Yes. And I've shown it for at least like 50 people since then. I'm like, look at this. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun to come outside. Oops, that guy was just ready. Didn't even need to be cut off the tree. <laughs> to just come out yeah. and be like, oh, I want avocados. So I'm gonna go pick them. It's like you're making something for like salsa. And you're like, I need limes. And you just go out and get them. Yeah. It's like the best thing. And is it a ton of work on each tree? Hmm. It's a, it's a fair amount of work. I mean, obviously, we know you're not afraid of some work. You enjoy it, but... I have glass ordered for these doors. So this is a temporary. <laughs> this yeah. isn't the forever look That's that I'm wanting. That's beautiful. This is a custom door. This is a cool door. This is a pivot. Yeah. Oh, cool. So... Uh, this is uh, this door is massive. This is a four foot, four foot by a hundred inch tall door. It's oh, like a four by eight door, basically. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just realized it's like basically the same dimensions as like a sheet of plywood. Oh, it's actually crazy. I never thought of that. You want me Anyways, to come in here? Yeah, come in, and then and then let me set these down. And then we're gonna, you know, I'll go show you this thing. I feel like your mindset is like always 
always thinking of how you can upgrade yes. everything in your environment, in your life. It's yeah. true. I'm, I'm basically, it's like, oh yeah, this is the Labradorite. Look, if you like walk. Your counter in, is Labradorite? Whole thing. Oh my gosh, my, my friend Jenny's going to die. She loves it. Walk, wow. If you walk around the whole thing, different parts of it will pop out. That is really cool. And look, come this way. Come and walk around this way. Okay. And look behind you as you walk. Wow. What? Where did you get this? I got it from this, you know, stone warehousey yeah. place. Oh, it looks so good. And then so I liked it so much that I took all these scraps oh, and I had I had a, a guy go and like fabricate them all and so nice. I made little tables out of them. But like look at this. Here's a oh. I'm making I'm gonna make like a little square table out of this. Oh yeah, smart. So yeah, people Beautiful. just have like jewelry out of this. That's true. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's definitely the biggest piece of lingerie I've ever seen by far. It's just <laughs> it's like house jewelry. Yeah. So do you know how lava tubes are formed? Lava penetrates through the ground and destroys everything in its way. No, I don't. Know. Wait. <laughs> also important. Smell this. This is the best smelling flower on our farm. Come down in any of these things. Smell it. Tell me what you, how you feel. Whoa. They are. They're very powerful. What for does how it smell like? Are. What do you think? Roses. Roses. Mm. It smells right there. It smells like roses. Oh. We think it smells like rings like candy. <laughs> the peach candy rings yeah try again okay, let me pink, try no, let me power candy. suggestion hold on <laughs> yeah it totally does <laughs> Look at it on my nose. yes it totally does now so these are two more citruses that i just planted for justin because she likes citrus Aww. And she said i need more and then i think i planted six more trees <laughs> We got some some kales and some little herbs and some things going on. What's oh is that kale? That's this a is kale. a little baby kale and yeah. this is a bigger kale. Yeah. Um, and this is Mizuna. Nice. And this is oregano. This is lemon balm. Ooh, lemon, lemon balm is so good. Yeah. Awesome. Check this out. Oh. Check this out, Tara. This is tiny. You recognize oh, so these? Oh, I read a book called Animal Vegetable Miracle about some homesteaders, and I will never not appreciate asparagus again. Try it raw. It's actually really good. Thank you for um, giving me this for like an entire year of no growth before you got asparagus, oh, correct? These things grow so fast. I think that's on the mainland. So mm. Since there's oh, no really? winter here, it's like faster. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's so good. Like, if we don't check them every couple days, they're like this. Really? Yeah. Yeah, wow. like everyone on the mainland, hard to grow. These are incredibly easy to grow here. And they grow, we would get asparagus in like six months. Because wow. there's no growing season. It's always the growing season. Yeah. Did wow. Did you see the pineapples? No, I have not seen. Are, they, are any of these oh, white the pineapples? These are all yeah. white pineapples. I, didn't you say the white pineapples are like the best thing on your farm? Have you never had one? That's no. Oh but boy. I don't okay. know if we have any ripe. Let's go there see. Was okay. one, there was one that we, was getting We might right. There's these are all they all take like a year and a half to produce. Right. So these are all This asparagus is like really good. It's I know, really right? good. Yeah. This one is good. Oh my oh. gosh. Look at this. I have never seen a pineapple growing up close like this before. It's close. That it's not is really. totally it. crazy. Wow. There's no more this way, right? How many do you have? There's about 500 in here. 500 pineapple plants? And you know where, how you get another pineapple? Once you pick the first pineapple, there's these little cakeys that grow off the bottom. There was already a pineapple taken off the, in the middle. Then you just pop these little things off, put it in the ground, and it'll grow another one. Amazing. Amazing. These are all a bunch of fruit trees. It's very exciting. All delicious things. Bananas. That asparagus was really good. Wasn't it so good? Yes. <laughs> this is um, our mac nut tree. I love our mac nut Oh. Tree. Wait, nice. we should show you. We should like crack open just a couple of mac yeah. nuts and show you. Yeah. Like, have you ever had? Well, right. We have some up there. 
We could go get more, or we could just... Should we jump down or just go get some from our bag? Uh, we could jump down and get some new ones. Magnets? Not surprised. Oh my gosh, I've never seen one like sprouted. Look at that. Wow, that came apart. that's in your backyard. That is awesome. Wait, yeah, and we have a whole. ones ready? Um, so they'll split we'll open more. Them. Yeah. So they'll dry the out. Brown and... one is ready. Okay. But if they're green like this when they fall, can you just Oh yeah, they'll wait. like ripen almost like fruit. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they'll dry out and then they'll crack open. <laughs> what an amazing like snack. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> and they're I mean, and right when you eat them raw, thing. they're actually like they taste like coconut. They're really, really? good. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, we I'll have show some you. that are ready up there. Okay. Here's a cool okay, look. Let me yeah, let me show you this cool looking fruit real quick. Okay. Maybe that pile. These are, I'm kind of excited. These oh, are the oh. first fruits that I've gotten off of this tree. This is a, this is a relative of jackfruit. Uh-huh. It's called a chempadak. Oh, wow. And it's, uh, it's really delicious, so. Is it a lot like jackfruit? It's, yeah, it's really... It looks a lot like it and it's similar, but it's it's not like have the crunchy texture. It's like soft. Okay. But these ones have really intense flavor and like wow. really high sugar. Mm, kind of fun. Delicious. Wow, look at all these back here. You got... So many. Just everything, basically every 25 feet, there's a different fruit tree somewhere. Then I have a few different kinds of sugar cane over here. Oh, cool. Here's a, here's a really dark purple cane. Oh, so there's a dark purple cane. You can see this one. This one's called Buddha Belly. It has a really kind of pretty color as it gets bigger. Um, and then which one is this? This is another Buddha Belly. And I'm planting some more over here. Uh, these ones didn't take very well. And but, you've been juicing sugar cane, and it's like super nutrient dense. Correct? It's crazy good. We should go here. Look, I can go. Let's go make some. Yes. You're in for a treat on this stuff. You are in for a treat. I remember when you got your machine. Oh, I was so excited. My little thing is here. Okay, so. So I do a couple extra steps in the process that I don't think are completely necessary, but I just do them because I want to ensure that it's clean. Yeah. So like, basically the first thing, you have to start off by getting the end ready to go in. So do one of those. And then, you know, this sugar cane grows out in the out in the field, so it's like I want to get like any potential dirt off of it. So I try to give it a little scrub, get the skin clean. And then um, these little like these little spots right here are in my top process. So this is where there could be dirt. So I clean off all these little joints. Sugarcane juice that's not heated and pasteurized actually has all these beneficial enzymes. It's supposed to be actually good for your teeth. It actually has low glycemic index. It doesn't seem like make any sense, right? Yeah. Well, I know, like, you know, in like, 
tribal societies. They would suck on it just to get the nutrients out of it, you know? Yeah, and it's supposed to be like a good alternative to a toothbrush because of how yeah. fibrous it is. Right. It's got iron in it. Supposed to give you, supposed to give you good breath, be good for digestion, like all this stuff. Okay. So, um, what is that called? Start our first one. Making cherries. All right, Tara. Hold up. You ready? You oh, can be instantly. I was eating them. <laughs> I figure it's got something good for me in it. What? The skin. <laughs> it probably does. Oh, can I put it in? Okay, you ready? Here mm -hmm. you go. Here, or we can film it this way and let the skin come out the other way. There's a bunch of different sugar cane juicers I've seen. Most of them are manual. And most people take the thing, fold it in half, and send it through again. Yeah. But this one is like, this one, like, look at the texture in there. It's like, I honestly think you could start a fire with that. It's like dry. Wow. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, look how bright green this one is. Woo! That one's going to wow. be vibrant and delicious. Yeah. OK. Let's do a thing. All right. Ready? Give that to our guest. I was going Give to that to our queen. Thank you so much. Give it to our princess. Give it to our Derek. Cheers. He gets the least amount. Too. I get more awesome, than him. Self sustainable, incredible living. Yeah, you're gonna have more. <laughs> we have more. I'll yeah. make more. <laughs> yeah. Let me run another stick through. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So good. Mm. This is so good. Do you know what it'd be better with? Oh, Do you know what this would be better with? I see. Derek, let's get that one in the ground. Look at that guy. Ooh, perfect. That is incredibly good. How long did it take you to grow this big? Of um, I got these from my friend's farm. Oh, okay. We're trying to propagate this right now. Dad, are we going to do a purple one? Yeah. We're going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. A purple one? Yeah, look behind you. Oh, wow. So it comes out purple, Mara? Uh -huh. Wow, cool. Yeah, will you show me your chicken? Over here is where you get the eggs. Oh, cool. Like this. Then you what? That is so awesome. Mm. It just rolls out. They just know the lamb. They just like the lamb right there. How does this work? So, if you come here, if you come here, well, there's two seeds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got a punch. Do anything. Do you want to do anything? Do you want to do anything? Mm. And over here, 
looks awesome. It's like little some fresh eggs that look like And here is where you insert the Oh, wow, smart. You just put you down here, it goes all the way down there. Oh, smart. Okay. You don't have to go in there every and time. If, and if it, you want to, like, give them fruit, you can just throw it down. Smart. And these are where the tubes come from. And there's a little water device right there that gives them water to drink. Oh, wow. This is a state-of-the-art chicken coop. I love it. Thanks for showing me. Oh, wait. Yeah, now look at the difference in this one. Check us out, Tara. Oh, wow. Does it taste a little different, too? Very different. But this is a really skinny one, so it should be good. Can I try? The skinny ones are better. I just want for the, the comedy of it, I mm. pour it into my pocket. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, all right, Miss. Do you have a preferred, Mr. Jeff? I go back and forth between <laughs> them. I got to choose. Thank you. You know what else we need to grow up here? Oh, this one it. almost has like a mm. little bit of like citrus, like a little yeah. hint of citrus. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so it's much. Good, right? Yeah, it's good. Oh, that's totally so good. good. Kind of Thanks putting, for harvesting. Yeah. Mm. Kind of putting coconut water to shame. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. Water. yeah, coconut water. water. Yeah. If it I could have been introduced stand. to this right like, in soda as a kid, yeah, I would have yeah, been yeah, exactly. As if you could even say no. Can't. And they showed you the pull-out drawer? Yes, Mara so showed we, us. So we take all that drawer out, and oh, then we can... Oh, no, okay, So then I drawer? can compost all their poop. Oh, so wow. I collect it all. Nice. I thought I told her that. I didn't realize it pulled out. You showed us so well, though. <clears throat> so this is a really, really exciting project for me. So I can't grow mangoes at this elevation, but at my other property, I can. So this is... This is the going to be the largest collection of mangoes in Hawaii wow. of different varieties. Wow. So there are some really exciting ones in here. Like obviously how much do you want a pina colada mango wow. or a coconut cream? That's Holy a, smokes. So these are all different varieties. So we have about 70 varieties. Oh my gosh. Look at these, some of these names. This is what they're 70. named. 70 creme brulee mango. Wow. There's Juicy peach. Some of them have peach. super high ratings, like juicy peach. Like people, so this is in, in Florida. That's where I got all these mangoes. Uh -huh. And they have like a massive breeding project and like diversifying, trying to get new cultivars of mangoes. What is raw wow. honey? It's supposed to taste really good. So these are... And ice cream wow. is Justin's. Can you have a big mango tasting party? That's Blood what I'm... Cream. All your friends? That's what we're planning on. <laughs> This Sweet one's supposed heart. to be like off the charts. Sweet Lemon heart. zest. Wow. Sweetheart. Sweet See if you like the smell of this plant. It's not a smell. See if you recognize that. <laughs> Can I smell yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a cool plant. It's called cannabis. It's... My mom has that in her fridge and it smells disgusting. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Doesn't it smell like it In Hawaii, can you have? Yeah. You can have a certain number or whatever. That Derek has here? a card. Oh. And have he, he licensed the property to be able to grow it. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, this is it? Yeah. This is a little entrance he made. So oh check my. this out. So this okay, was yeah, built. The story. This was built way before this was. This was here. Okay. So, you know, what's crazy that about this is, is really the. Crazy. I'll have to tell you the whole story in detail, but Where the, I make the, the placement of this hexagon was very interesting. I'm usually really methodical about like, okay, I'm gonna make it like equal distance from that fence line and this fence line, or I'll make it like directly centered with right. this tree or whatever, right? right? So back when this was all just dirt and I had no idea anything was here, I was trying to figure out where I should place this hexagon. 
and I put the blocks in the ground and I kind of formed the edge and I couldn't kind of, I couldn't really figure out where I wanted it. And I was going back and forth and I had it over here and over here and all these different places. And I had it even like more centered with this tree. At one point I had it centered with this tree and I was like, okay, this feels pretty good, but it wasn't right. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why. And I was like, I should move it this way. And it was like, it actually kind of bugged me because I was like, wow. it's not really centered with like anything. Wow. But I moved it and moved it and moved it. And I eventually built it here. Now what's crazy about this is that if I hadn't had put the hexagon here, I would have never found the lava tube. Wow. Because what happened was this was here and this was all gravel. And what I was wanting to do was I was digging a hole to plant a tree right here. And I was gonna plant a canopy tree. Wow. So that this would do like the roundabout thing. So you see how the distance between that furthest pillar and this middle would be, you know, a nice space for a car to drive around. Right. And it's about the same distance around there. That's what I thought this was gonna be, was like a wow. little roundabout deal. And when we started digging the hole for the lava tube or for the for the tree to plant the tree. Obviously, we poked through the roof of the lava tube. Now, what's crazy is if that wasn't there, like say that say that gazebo was five feet further this way, yeah, and this hole would have been five feet further this way. This is the wall of the cave. I wouldn't wow. have found it. If the hole would have been five feet further that way, I wouldn't have found it. Wow, crazy. And then the other thing is the reason it's dug out right here is because once I was inside, this was the natural opening. At basically, this was like piled in rocks. And so this was actually loose earth. So the excavator came in and dug this out. And this is the wall of the cave right here. And so what that means is this is on solid foundation. If this would have been five yeah. feet that way, it would have been on like loose material. Right. So everything is just like, ah, that's it all just happened for a reason. Like yeah. all the placement, just wild. Wow. So we excavated it out. I built remember stairs. seeing your Instagram stories when you were sharing this. I was like, could not believe you were going to drop down. Because this, at this point, it was a hole with a ladder Dad, going down yes. it. Look, I made it off And that there. was scary. Wow. It's, it's even more magical at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Why are we calling it a cave when it's a tunnel? Welcome to the lava tube. Do you have any more speakers? Wow. Do you have any more speakers? Um, I... Mara, it's okay. Just let... Just be quiet for a minute. Wow. One thing that I think is really cool is if you look inside of this this thing right behind my bag. Look inside of this thing. It looks like the inside of a pizza oven. <laughs> wow. It really does. But there's all these little tunnels. Do you want to hold one of these? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this basically, there's like all these little side things. Like that's a tube that goes back somewhere all these little tubes. There's actually a tube that goes underneath down here that we discovered that goes underneath this whole thing. Mm, wow. Really? But it's pretty crazy. Oh, I never told you how lava tubes are formed. No, you didn't. So, you know, obviously lava flows like a river, right? That's smooth right there. So it goes down to the lowest point. So when the, when the lava is going down the mountain, it goes to a low point, like, like a river would. And then... After a while, the sides start to crust over like a river does with ice. And once the crusts meet in the middle, the lava still keeps flowing. And then it keeps cutting deeper and deeper into the earth. But the top has already crusted over. Oh, So it, it's see. going, going, going. And then it just cuts, 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 cuts down through. Interesting. And then eventually when the volcano stops erupting, the lava... The, the cave has been formed by all the crusting over and then the lava just stops mm -hmm. on the bottom. So that's why most lava tubes have a pretty flat bottom because the river was flowing and then just kind of stopped. I see. But the sides are all basically wow. 
the crusting over. So yeah, yes. here's our lava tube. Yeah, let me show you like what I did over here. So when we when we first moved in, there was a bunch of vegetation all in front of this pool. I went and cut it all out, and then I put solar panels on the other side of it. Uh, pool heating solar panels, and that kind of was uh, that improved the pool temperature by about five degrees. Doesn't seem like a lot, but um, you definitely don't cut corners. We don't. Five degrees this, makes a difference. This whole thing is all solar panels, which also helps the view. And then the other thing that was odd about this place is I noticed there was nowhere for people to like lay in the sun. So we created a deck. So basically built this deck way out here because I noticed that whenever people would come, they uh, they would try to go in the pool and then lay out in the sun. And this is all covered. So had to make like a layout area. Nice. Took out this nasty old fence and this whole thing. I don't even know how to put like into words what I've done here. It's like insane. It's like a year of just grueling labor. So the mansion's on five acres, and then there's a five acre square below the mansion, and then our property is the five acre below that one. Okay. So this is what happens if you leave something. And the funny Don't thing- Don't take care of your coffee orchard business. <laughs> and this was already mowed. This was the clean one before. Wow. Remember ours was the overgrown and this was yeah, the yeah, dirty yeah. one. So this is- Ours was like probably like double. Oh, five, five, five times this. Oh, wow. Five times this. It was. It was like 12 feet tall of grass and just full of just junk, junk trees. Wow. You'll see a clear line of delineation of where our beautiful property starts because we've been working on it for the last like three months, getting it cleared and ready. Nice. And now we're going through row by row and getting everything cleared out so that we can be able to mow and maintain because like you don't mow for a few weeks and like yeah bad bad yeah, news it, it seems like things grow here see like you couldn't like you couldn't there's coffee in here you can't even tell it's like and yeah. and ours was literally like three times worse than this wow. so here's where our property starts you probably noticed the energy feels better already <laughs> yeah Look at our cute little coffee trees. Oh my gosh. The whole thing. Wow. I just went to a coffee farm earlier and was sharing about it on Instagram. I'm like, what? <laughs> Isn't it pretty? It reminds me of like, wow, good work, guys. So we have been like, yeah. we're totally. king in here. Like this was, I can't even, Tara, I can't even explain to you. There was probably, there was probably 20 trees just in this square, like wow. full, Rubbish. Like, That's see all these trees so on these work. perimeters? Yeah. Like, it was like that inside of here. In here? Wow, you guys have been working hard. Working so hard. Insane. Insane. Like, absolutely insane. All of this that we're seeing, this is all, all yours. Everything the light touches. Awesome. <laughs> like, look at these beautiful rows. Look at that beautiful tree. Yeah. Look how massive that thing is. Incredible. So, now... We have the decision of if we want to be coffee farmers, which I guess we are. Yeah. So here's our coffee. And, and then one day we're going to build a house on this, I mean, on this lot. I mean, I've heard kind of famous for coffee. It might work. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Is it? It's like the highest. I just found out it's by far the most expensive coffee yeah. in the world, like times three. Really? Like Tacona coffee even compared to like 
Kauai coffee or Maui coffee. Like Kona coffee is for whatever reason, like even double the price of other Hawaiian coffees. Interesting. Well, I'm sure five years from now, you're gonna be able to tell me every single detail about why. <laughs> so, so what we've been doing lately is we've been re-terracing this whole bottom Oh my gosh, how does Junior actually do this? Look at this. Look at this grade that he's been making. Oh my God. Look at how flat he has the bottom. Wow. Oh my goodness, terrible. So this is the bottom of our property. Okay. And we're about to put in, we're about to put in a new fence. Isn't this just like pretty? Like, look at this. It's so pretty. We, le we left all the monkey pod trees. They're so beautiful. Oh, babe, I have good news. I, I took the top of this tree off to turn it into a stump, and I'm gonna have Fale carve something cool out of it. I like the little stump benches. You're gonna get it too. <laughs> So I, I took great pains to take this top off and make this a nice flat spot right here. And so this we can carve into like a something. We'll have him carve this into something really cool. So much as stump punch. Yeah. Too fast. <laughs> and then babe, you don't know what's gonna, what's gonna go right here? Coconut. One of those coconut trees. <sighs> right on this corner, on that corner. So here's what we're doing. I know you're here as a homer, dying to know about this. So this hillside used to be much longer slope like this. And this is the edge of our property, this post right here. And so we had to make a fence that goes across this whole thing. But we didn't want to make a fence like on the hillside because then it would feel full of rocks and just be awful. Yeah. So we made this little bench and now we're going to plant like 30 mango trees right on this oh, bench. Oh, cool. Smart. Okay. 